Hi there, I hope you're well. In this video, I'll be talking you through the build of my workshop DIY multifunction table or MFT for short. I went through all my hardware and extrusion choices in the previous video, so I won't be dwelling on those here. And if that's of interest to you, I do recommend that you take a look at that video first. There are links down below as always. This video is all about the build and this is the finished table itself or rather unfinished because I do need to get a coat of something on the surface but we'll get to that a little bit later. Let me give you a quick rundown on the bench. It's the same width as a regular Festool MFT3 at 1100mm but it is significantly deeper with an 800mm crosscut. The height remains the same at about 200mm plus the thickness of the top and where Festool's MFT was intended as a portable workbench this is resolutely a fixed or workshop based table and I've designed it to be used in a run of benches like this. I have mine sitting on simple plywood shelves attached to the legs of the benches on either side with the surface nicely level between them so that the run of bench top is continuous but with a gap at either side where additional processes, machining or sawing or routing can be carried out with both sides of the workpiece fully supported. The bench is constructed mostly with birch ply, with the top being from the same coloured all the way through MDF as the previous benches. This is Finsa Fibrocolor. Uh, Valchromat is the other material that's common to this type. Fibrocolor tends to be a little bit, let's say, less expensive and leave it at that. As I mentioned in the previous video, the hardware choices tend to dictate the thickness of the material and the front face has a 12mm birch ply glued and pinned onto an 18mm birch ply backing board. The 12mm fascia means that the standard T-track sits nicely flush with the surface and I've set two T-tracks into this face, the first 18mm down from the top and the second centred on the lower pair of holes in the dashboard PWS front rail support. More on that later. Having two T-tracks simply gives us more clamping opportunities and more flexibility, more choices. The placement of these tracks is entirely up to you. Just be aware that if you are using one of them for a front rail support, setting it too low down will reduce the maximum depth of cut on the bench. The T-track is simply screwed onto the birch ply. If I was using MRMDF, I might consider bolting it through with small machine screws, but with plywood, I'm expecting even the tiny 3 by 20 millimeter screws to hold just fine. The back face of the bench is made with a 12 mil birch ply backing board with a 22 millimeter MRMDF fascia cut to allow the IKEA curtain track extrusion to be fitted flush with the surface. Again, please see the previous video for the full story on the IKEA curtain track. I've used 22 mil MRMDF simply because I had some and I didn't much fancy buying a full sheet of 22 mil birch just for a couple of short lengths plus the back of the bench is facing a wall so I'm not really too concerned about the aesthetics. Like on the front face the curtain track is set slightly down from the top edge, 12mm in this case, because I wanted the rail hinge to bear against the fascia nice and plumb. This 12mm down was an arbitrary measurement to be perfectly honest and I've made no attempt to match the front and rear profiles in terms of height. If this makes your OCD go off the charts then I would definitely look into fixing that but the front and rear extrusions on my bench will never be connected so it doesn't bother me in the slightest. The sides are plain 18mm birch ply and I've used peanut 2 fittings to connect the sides to the front simply because it gives me the option, the flexibility to easily change the depth of the bench at a later date and peanut 2 connectors are a self clamping hidden fixing. The back of the bench is simply screwed through into the sides. And then the curtain track extrusion can be fitted with T-bolts drilled through the plywood and secured with lock nuts from the inside. The bench top is a standard MFT style grid of 20mm holes on 96mm centres. I regularly get asked what the best technique is for these MFT tops and my answer is always to say simply put your hand in your pocket and buy one. Here in Britain there are commodity purchase commonly available at between 30 and 40 pounds. They're really not worth your while making one unless you want an alternative material or a custom size. Uh, mine is both of those things of course and I have my own process for making them which I've described in detail in previous videos. My process does rely on some pretty expensive gear though so let me know in the comments down below if you'd be interested in a video about less costly alternatives for a DIY MFT top. Just bear in mind though that even the simplest of MFT router jigs will cost more than an off-the-shelf commodity MFT top. Incidentally when it came to make my bench top 
I realized I'd have the fiber color cut to 700 mil, not 800 mil. And again, I didn't much fancy buying a whole sheet just to get a bigger top. So I just added in a 100 mil strip along one edge with loose tenons and glue, clamped it up overnight, and it's as solid as anything. Obviously, I use loose tenons, dominoes, because I have them, but I'm sure you could do the same job just as well with biscuits or dowels. An off-the-shelf MFT3 top is about 80 millimeters smaller than this bench, so if you're looking at a budget build, then adding an 80 mil strip to a commodity MFT top would definitely be a thrifty way to do it. As with all my benches, I've routed a channel into the top to take a sacrificial strip of 6mm MRMDF that's easily replaced. And it really extends the life of the bench top. And in this case, because I've aligned the guide rail edge directly against a column of holes, it does mean that the cut line and the sacrificial strip also covers a column of holes. I'm fine with this. The strip is easily removed for access to those dog holes if they're needed. But again, if that's an issue for you, then feel free to make your own decisions on that. I'm using the Bench Dogs fence and right extension fence for this build. I purchased these, but please note that I am a Bench Dogs affiliate, so I may earn from qualifying sales when you use the offer code 10 Minute Workshop at checkout for a 5% discount across the board at Bench Dogs Co. UK. And thanks so much to Ralph at Bench Dogs for extending that offer. Now, I'm a big fan of the Bench Dogs Fence Dogs. These were the first of the Bench Dogs products that I bought way back in the early days of the channel. And the brilliance of these is that they automatically align the fence to the rows of holes in the MFT top. That does mean, of course, that you lose a row of holes at the top of the bench, which means in turn that the cross cut capacity is actually reduced. So for this build, I've set the fence back on strips of 22 mil MRMDF with a 12 mil birch pie backer, and I've attached that to the curtain track with N8 T-bolts and knobs, and the fence to the plywood with M6 knobs and T-nuts. This works out really well. You get a rock solid fence that's clear of the workspace, but easily removed and refitted as required. Mm -hmm. It also means that the top can just butt up against the 22 mil MDF and you can pretty much guarantee that it's in line with the fence, so it's always worth checking. And then the top can just be screwed down into the carcass. As I mentioned earlier, I bought the dashboard PWS rail hinge set. The hinge fits neatly into the rear curtain track with the supplied T-bolts and the front rail support into the front T-track and these can be easily adjusted so that the rail butts up against a pair of quad style dogs and then locked in place against the T-track. I've made a simple flush fitting start from a scrap of plywood and a grub screw to locate the front rail support so it can be easily removed and returned into position. And the fact that the T-track is lowered slightly means that the whole front rail support can be dropped down below the bench surface if you just need it to be out of the way temporarily. So far so good, we've got a pretty comprehensive bench setup with a solid fence, a fantastic hinge, and a generous 800 mil crosscut, but you know that you're gonna need more than that occasionally. There'll be that odd time when you need to crosscut 850 or 900 mil, maybe a little bit more. What do you do then? Well, then I remove the front rail support or just move it along perhaps, and I fit this, the table extension, this simple shelf, if you like, made from birch ply and fiber color, just like the bench, attaches to the lower T-track so it's not affected by the front rail stop and extends the crosscut to over a meter. And for me, that's more than enough to be trying to cut in this workspace. Now, the downside of having this much width and then adding to it with a little extension means, of course, you lose the front rail support. I've got the dashboard one here. And the reason I've aligned the rail with quad dogs is so that I can have another one in the extension to keep that all lined up. But the problem then is how do you actually keep the rail in line with the dog? There's a few ways to do this. Um, a little while back, I looked at the Sada Shop Vario bench and they had these little positional hooks. And I remembered that Dave Stanton, Australian woodworker and YouTuber, had a really clever dog locking system. So I watched Dave's video. I, I knocked one of these up together for myself in about two minutes from spare parts that I already had and I'm delighted to say that Dave joins us now for a quick chat about uh, well about everything really. <laughs> Dave good morning how are you doing? Or good, good morning from me good evening to you probably. Good morning to you Peter good evening definitely from here it's around yeah. 6 p.m. I'm missing out on dinner to be with you but that's okay. <laughs> I was going to say we're, we're messing with each other's meal times breakfast for me and dinner for you but <laughs> thank you for giving up a bit of your evening. My pleasure. Just for the folks who don't know you 
give me the, the 30 second elevator pitch on, on Dave Stanton and his woodwork channel. Well, Dave stumbled across YouTube, did a video on washing his dog, five and a half million views, launched the channel. I thought, well, people will watch anything. So woodworking, why not? I'm a retired builder, was an apprentice carpenter at 16. So I had all the credentials to be able to do this kind of stuff. I try and do it without actually, actually um, creating problems for people. I try and keep it as simple as possible so people don't hurt themselves. Hand tools, power tools, whatever. Uh, and I'll do something once a week. I have a live show as well. It runs for an hour and it's whatever. I, I really admire what you do on your live shows. I've only ever done a couple. My, my workshop Wi-Fi is really flaky, so I'm amazed we've, we've managed it this far, to be honest. So uh, no, I really admire what you do with your, your live shows. And you've got quite a sophisticated workshop too. Um, we'll, we'll get to that maybe in a little bit. Let's talk about this dog lock. Um, again, such a simple, brilliant idea. You're no stranger to, to custom benches yourself, having made a few. Um, what, what made you think of, of using a little sort of you know, wedge shape like this? My, my problem was that other dog locks that were around, yeah, yeah. they tend to slide off the track when they're not in use. And I thought to myself, well, why not create a, a lock out of plywood to start with, to give it a test, see if it'd work, and create a taper in this area here so that as this goes onto one, hard up against one dog and then slides down onto the other dog, it wedges itself in. There's no need for any more adjustment after you do the initial screws to make it tight and then to take it off, lifting up the radius creates a shorter distance between the two dogs, simple. And the, the beauty of having it referencing off a dog is you, you know, if you want a clear bench back, you just take the dog out. There's no front sort of rail support getting in your way or anything. Correct. One of the other things, Peter, because it's got a taper, it will also work with three quarter inch dogs. So for the people in the yeah. States, if they, want, if they want to use three quarter, go for it. Uh, again, this is the one that I made, just like your little plywood one. I think yep. you made one out of plywood to start with, and then you had a polycarbonate, and now you're, you're 3D printing them, and you're getting them 3D printed in the US. I'll, I'll put all the links and stuff down below. It's, I mean, it's such a, a great, simple idea. I, I just copied your design, basically, uh, with a piece of plywood and a half a uh, guide rail joining bar that I had knocking around, yes. and a couple of little M6 knobs. If you're, if you're fiddling around with this kind of stuff anyway, you're going to have this gear that you need and it's, it's the work of a couple of minutes, literally, to make one of these. It's brilliant. It's one of those things, once you've got it, you think, where, what was I doing without this? Listen, thank you for joining me here today in the Tamil workshop. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, obviously, you're Dave Stanton Woodworking on YouTube. Well, it's, yeah, so if you just go youtube.com forward slash David Stanton, I will come up on YouTube. Yeah, we'll, we'll link, I'll, I'll find them and link those up down below. Good idea, Peter. That saves all the yeah. mucking around. Fantastic. Okay. Pleasure talking to you this morning. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to go and have breakfast. You're going to go and have dinner. Yes. <laughs> and I'll see you in this virtual world of YouTube later on. Right. Thanks a lot, Peter. I'll see you later. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Oh, what a top bloke day this and what a great solution this is to the problem. There's other ways to skin this cat, of course, those little spring rail clip things, if you have them. But this is so simple and so easy to make. And as Dave says, it can work with all sizes of bench dog too. So this bench is pretty much complete, apart from the finish. I want to get a coat of something on the bench top and front extension. And in the past, I've just used whatever I had to hand. But when I redid my bench tops, I used some Liberon Black Bison paste wax, which has worked really well. For the MFT top though, I want something a little bit harder wearing maybe that'll cope with glue squeeze and dribble and all the usual things. But I also like the colour to be knocked back a shade darker. So I thought I'd try an oil. I've already got the wax paste and I've bought some finishing oil, some Danish oil, I had some tongue oil already and I got some water-based lacquer or varnish. And I tested a small patch of these out on a well-sanded piece of fabric colour, leaving them to dry overnight. Now, in the end, I didn't actually bother with the tongue oil because the, uh, on the test, because the curing time, the drying time, was too long for something like this. And between the four samples, it's a pretty even match between uh, them all. But to be honest, the finishing oil and the Danish oil are the two that I like because it's slightly darker. The Danish oil is going to be the one that I'm going for. And while I apply that with a stockinette cloth, uh, to the bench tops on the front extension. I'm going to talk you through the costs to date on this particular project.
So I'm going to stay right from the start that the purpose of this build wasn't to get an MFT on the cheap, it was to get a better bench, more suited to my workspace. Let's look at those costs. The IKEA curtain track was £19, the Rutland's T-Track was 30 the knob and T-bolt set from Rutland's another 20 I bought some M8 knobs and T-bolts for another £15, and an off-the-shelf commodity MFT top would add another 40 Materials are tricky, but allowing purely for what I'd used, a half sheet of 18mm birch ply and a quarter sheet of 12mm birch and some MDF scraps, I've allowed £60 for that. These are all including that, by the way. So a total of £184 so far. Now we get to the pricier parts of the build. Add a bench dog's fence, extension and flag stop, and that's another £119, bringing us to a little over £300 in total. And then there's almost as much again when we include import duties for the dashboard hinge set. Another £285 right there, bringing the total to £588. So that's the finished article with a coat of oil on it and looking pretty nice, I've got to say. <laughs> and at £588, so it should. The current street price of a Festival MFT3 set with the rail and everything is around £650. I've seen it offered though at 620 at some retailers. So in purely financial terms, you might look at that and say, well, that's nuts, just buy an MFT and save yourself the bother of the build. Except the point of this was to get a better bench, better suited to my needs and my space. And it is unquestionably better, better fence, better hinge, better crosscut, better for me anyway. Except I do find the hinge overhang to the rear to be problematic. It pushes the whole bench further forwards, too much, I think, to be comfortable in this space. That's not a criticism of a hinge, it's part of the portable bench system where you'd be expected to have access all around the bench. And it's a really nice hinge, too nice really, because it's kind of ruined the Festool hinge for me. The whole idea behind the curtain track was that it was an extrusion that will accept, with a little modification, the Festool rail hinge, which at around £60 for the hinge or £110 for the front and rear set, seems like an absolute bargain in comparison. And that's not something you get to say about Festool very often. Use the Festool set and the total cost for this build comes down to a much more palatable £413 or so. The trouble is though, even though I've got one, I just don't want to use it. It feels cheap and tinny in comparison and it's much more of a faff to change rails, for example, if you do want a longer rail for the occasional crosscut. So I guess the answer is that there'll be a DIY rail hinge set to come on this build at some point. Not now, not yet. I'm all MFT'd out for the moment and you probably are too. So I'll call this one done for the minute and I'll just get on and use it as it is and I'll see how it goes. If you fancy making one of these yourself, there'll be a set of plans along soon and I'll add links to that in the video description when they're available. I do want to say a big shout out and thanks so much to Dave Stanton for stopping by and having a chat. Go and check out Dave's channel. There's always something good to watch there. And thank you as always to my amazing Patreon supporters and YouTube members who've been living with me on this little build with regular blow by blow videos of the whole process from the very first MDF proof of concept prototypes right through to this finished piece. If that sounds like your kind of thing, then do come and join the 10 minute workshop team. We'd love to have you on board and taking part. There are links as always down below where you can do just that. But that's it for this one. Thanks so much for taking a look and I'll see you in the next one. All right, take care.